What's up everybody? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. I've got a 2015 1500 series Ram pickup in with a 5.7. It's got a broken off exhaust manifold bolt on the driver's side. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. First thing we do is get the car up in the air, get the tire off, and just remember like I always say, if you gotta jack it up, use jack stands, safety first. We're gonna go ahead and remove the inner splash shield. That's got about a handful of eight millimeter bolts and about four or five pushing clips. I was kind of hoping it would be the passenger side leaking because that's the easier side to do. Needless to say, we're gonna go back with new push clips. They're not coming out very well, but it happens. What do you do, right? Really when you get the splash get out of the way in these things, it makes it really accessible. But if you look right here, this is the one he's got that's broken. See the shield busted off? If you pull it back a little bit, you can see right up inside here that it's missing. In doing this, the biggest issue, and it's not really an issue, is the biggest obstacle is gonna be this dipstick. I'm gonna try just to remove it from right here and just slightly bend it out of the way a little bit just to make it more accessible. I don't want to really have to take the dipstick out. I mean, if I have to, I will, but I'm, it's not my game plan right this minute. All right, it looks like it's got 10 millimeters holding this on. So let's go ahead and get them out of the way and get that shield out of the way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is soak it down. Um, all I have is WD-40. Like I said earlier, I'm sure you guys know that's not my preference. We use a nut buster type fluid that really penetrates good, but they didn't have any, so we had to get a full can of this and. I'm not going to waste it. We're definitely going to use it. But in my opinion, this does not work very well. It's a 10 millimeter nuts that hold this shield on. We got some noise going on in here today. Holy crap. But it's like I say, if we're not making noise, we're not making money. Might have well burned a lower broke. I believe so. All right, we gotta get this out. I got it. Taking the dipstick out. And we're gonna try to get this under there where I can move it back a little bit. Hopefully I can work with that. Hmm. I may not be able to do it that way. I may have to take that damn dipstick out. I do not want to do that though. Work with me just a little bit. All right, if I want to get this dipstick out of the way, there's a bracket right down below the motor mount. It's really almost impossible to get to without being a pain in the butt. The easiest way to do it is I'm gonna separate the steering linkage right here and take this dipstick tube and kind of just move it out of the way a little bit. That should give me enough clearance to be able to get that heat shield off and work. At least that's what we're hoping for. That bolt was a 13 I just took out. Now I'm hoping now that I got it like this, I can get this shield and just kind of like bend it out of the way a little bit best I can. And take it out like this. I don't think the exhaust manifold's cracked. I, I really think it's just got the broken studs in there. So we should be all right with that. But you can see where the bottom stud broke off and the top stud broke off. Now I don't have no idea why they broke off, which is kind of a, a little bit of a mystery. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it up in the air a little bit and I'm gonna take the bolts where the exhaust manifold meets the exhaust pipe right here at the flange. 
go ahead and get that pipe out of the way. Then I'll lower it back down and start taking some of these other ones off. But while I got it like this, I'm gonna use that wonderful WD-40 I used. Yesterday I had to stop while I was working on this and my wife has been battling some teeth issues for a while and uh, she had to go get a root canal done. And I'm gonna tell you what, she was in there for a few hours. I'm sorry for her. No one likes to see anyone they love in pain. All right, let's get her up in the air. The two flange bolts are a 14. Well, that was too easy, which means the top one is gonna be a bear. So going from the bottom side, the O2 sensor's in the way, so it's kind of hard to get to that upper bolt right here. So I don't really want to mess with the O2 sensor because just in case it's frozen in there. So I already had the splash shield out, so I'm probably going to try to come in from this way and get it this way, maybe like with a um, speed ratchet or something. Could I be so lucky? All right. I did not expect it to come out that easy. So just a little pro tip here. Nine out of 10 times when you mess with these exhaust bolts, you always gotta break out the torch. I think I just got lucky, that's all, because uh, that is definitely not norm. So the top three bolts are, I believe, all 10s. Now the back one's gonna be a 12. But the two middle ones are 10s, and I did soak them down a little bit, so hopefully with a little bit of luck, I don't have any issues of these breaking off. Seems to be a pretty common problem, though, with these Dodges. It's like the third one I've done, so I figured I'd make a video on it, because I can't be the only one doing these freaking exhaust manifold bolts. I think the two pain in the butt ones are gonna be on the bottom side here. Although I should be able to get on them fairly easy. Just can't really see the bolts at all. So if any of you guys follow like travel channels or whatever, my daughter's got a YouTube channel called Nomadic Habits and she was literally just in that hurricane that happened in Texas. Uh, they were the ones who actually were on the news and had to run into the ditch or whatever. I'll put a link to her page or I mean her channel in my description, you can go check it out. It's the full story actually how everything took place throughout the day is kind of neat well not neat that it happened but just kind of weird how it all unfolded should i say i guess neat was the wrong choice of words <laughs> dark as crap in here i know the lighting ain't the best in the world but i'm trying to take my hats off to the people who work on their cars at home like this without a lift and aren't don't have this capability and they do these jobs it's that is a lot of patience. Just to be able to do one of these and not really have a lift to be able to go up and down and have to get it in a certain position and climb under it and climb over it. And we're getting lucky so far. I believe this one is a 12. Uh, maybe a 13. Yep, 13. I literally don't have any strength in my right arm. I'm getting ready on February 24th to have a soul, shoulder surgery. And I repair a torn labrum and some other stuff they got going on in there. And I'm gonna be out of commission for a little bit. Hopefully I got enough videos in the backlog to keep it going for a little while. And I was thinking about <clears throat> doing a, like a sit down at the desk and a talk type thing, like a little podcast type thing. Just talk about different repairs and different ways to tackle stuff. If any of you guys have anything you'd like to hear, give me some ideas. That's right, I said ideas. Something I can do at a desk for a while. I think this bottom one here looks like a 10. Nah, maybe a 13 because it's got the stud on. I believe all the studs have 13s. Boom. I am ready for summertime. I am a beach person. I am not a winter person. I'm gonna get my scope real quick, but I believe some of the bottom ones have the exhaust manifold has a, is like a cutout in the bottom half so you could just slide it over top and it hangs there. I just can't see which ones it is. So I'm gonna get my little bore scope out. Let's see. Maybe I can see from this angle. I don't think that one's like that. <clears throat> I believe that middle one is uh... All right, so it's like I was thinking. This one right here has got a, the a bottom of the exhaust manifold. It's cut out like a U. So this bolt here, you just have to loosen up. This cab, when, so when you're putting it back in, it just makes it easier to put it on. You know, I'm gonna have to get just a short extension on it. I'm gonna try to give you guys a good view, but the last two bolts on the bottom side, and they, they look like eight millimeters. Hopefully I can get it this way. 
I should be able to, but if I look at this one here, this one looks like it's also a cut in it. <clears throat> you know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of the swivel and go with a medium size extension. And the reason why I'm going to a medium size extension without the swivel, I just don't want to take a chance of stripping the bolt. I'm trying to get like a, a direct, I don't know, almost like an uh, angle on it without having to twist anything. Ugh. All right, I got that one. Let's see, can I get on this one here? This is gonna be the goofy one right here. So basically, I'm cheating a little bit. There's a bracket right here, and I'm gonna bend it down some more just so I can get to that lower, the last bolt right there. And then when I'm done, I'll just knock it back up. I'm sure I'll get some comments about that, but you know what? It's all for the greater cause. And knocking the hell out of the camera. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we have that one loose, and there is one more 13 way at the other end down there. So I'm gonna lower it back down, and let's get that last one out. So I had already loosened this one up. I thought it had a slot on it on the bottom side of the exhaust manifold, you know, like a little U cutout, but I guess it doesn't. I can't really feel it. If it does, I'm guessing it's gotta come out all the way. I did see one on the back side, of, on the back end of it though. I'm hoping I don't have to move the exhaust pipe any to get it. I'm hoping it just kind of slides out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's kind of what I was afraid of. This one down here is just going to have to come out all the way in order for me to get it out. Because it's loose, all but that one right there. Go back up in the air with it. Let me go ahead and get that last board out of the bottom. And that is that. I hit my head more than any one man alive. Okay, now that we got all the bolts out, we're gonna to try to finagle this thing out. <clears throat> and we'll push down with a pry bar right here. So what I've done is I put a two by four right here on the exhaust and got a pry bar. I'm just gonna pry it down a little bit and hopefully I can get it out. I might have to ask somebody to come help me. There, nope, it came out just like that. All right, like I said, a pry, two by four and a pry bar and she came right on down. Now we're gonna finagle this out. Let's get this gasket out first. There's your gasket. This should finagle out pretty good. Let's see why it wouldn't. See, this is where I struggle at because I can't, I don't have any strength going upward. I have to go down like this. And All right, and that is that. When you pull off the exhaust manifold right here, uh, make sure you don't lose these two clips. And that's one thing that I was afraid of. That one bolt, <laughs> it looks like it's broke off flush in the block. All right, I need to regroup here. Let me come up with a game plan uh, and then I'll get back and we'll explain what we're gonna do. You're only doing that one little thing? All right, so I've got an angle drill and I'm just gonna try to drill a hole in here and then use an easy out to get it out. Uh, hopefully just take my time and just continue on like this. Of 
course I didn't have the mic on so what I the video you just saw there there was no sound and I apologize for that but these here like I was saying earlier I had used this on a previous job and I had to use a torch so it was a little heat heated up and it was weak so I was lucky that it worked but basically I just took my time got a good angle and it's about an hour's worth of drilling and this is what I ended up with uh, a nice straight hole and I was able to get that bit in there now that we got it out, let me get some parts ordered because I'm not really worried about the other one. The other one, I have a tool. Matter of fact, I'll show it to you in just a few minutes. It'll take it right out with no problem. But let me get the rest of the parts ordered, call the customer and let them know the good news that we don't need to take the head off and drill and tap it. It came out successfully because he was worried about that. And at this particular time in life, I don't have time for a head job. So let's go make a few phone calls uh, i'm gonna get the other tool and we'll get showing you what it looks like and i'll get to showing you how it works so we just got some parts in uh the gaskets are ms97083 and that's what it looked like just like this and the bolt kit is a dorman 03309 Doing a little research, the only ones that get Loctite are the end ones, the ones with the studs on the end of it. All right, let's get them on the car. One thing to keep in mind when you're installing gaskets, is make sure you pay attention. This says to the manifold. The metal goes towards the block. The felt side always goes towards the manifold. Make sure you, before you get back with the header, you clean it all off. Get a little zip gun, a little wire wheel or whatever you got at home and clean it off. So if you look right here, you can see this is the one that's been leaking right along here. See how dark it is? Make sure you get a little bit of paper and just clean up the area really good. So when you go back with the new, you don't have any issues. Doesn't take much. Anything you do now is just gonna benefit you when you go back with the part. You know, try not to skip any steps. You know, if you see something, just take care of it now. No matter how much of a rush you get in, it's, just, it's always good just to step back and say, okay, hey, what do I need to do to help me at the end here so I'm gonna go back and do it twice. Sometimes you can, literally, you can take all the precaution you want and then you still end up doing the crap twice. Been there, done that. But at least you can't say, hey, I didn't do what I needed to do. My right hand is not working today. That looks pretty good. So when you're going back with the parts in the gasket, they make it so the gasket, that U-bolt, the U-section, the cutout and the damn the U-bolt. So they make it, like I was showing you earlier, the, the cutout and the exhaust manifold. It's so you can set your gasket here in place, like this, just like this. And you can put the exhaust manifold and it'll set around this and then you'll tighten it up kind of helps it because they know basically you can't get your hand back in there let me show you what i'm talking about there's two cutouts in this exhaust manifold one is here and one is here and it's just so when you go to install it the gasket's straight and you can slide it in here and then it'll set on that one in here kind of rock in place it'll make more sense when i'm doing it and if that didn't make sense to you So in this one over here, I think it was the right upper one. It had a, just get a few threads on this one. And a few threads on the bottom one here. That don't feel so hot. There we go. Now I'm feeling it. So it means I'm doing this by myself without taking that exhaust in. I just need a little bit of clearance. So I'm gonna try to push this down and shove a two by four right here just to kind of hold it down. Hopefully that'll hold it just enough out of, out of the way where I can get it in. If not, we'll get a little bit more bite on it, move it some more. But I'm hoping that should be enough. Nice. 
So I gotta get that down some more. Thought I had enough, but I didn't. I'll be dang, I think I got it. I think I got lucky, though. Just about fell right in place. And I know you can't see jack crap of what I'm doing, but. So make sure before you tighten them all up, everything gets hand tightened. It's a lot easier that way. I think the hardest part is getting light on where you need to see that you're gonna work, to be honest with you. Well, you're better off doing the thing outside, you can see better. I think book time on this is only a couple hours, but you know, having to tap out the hole adds all your extra time. I got it. You already got it? Yeah. Sorry. You all right? No big deal. It's all good, man. I feel the love anyway. All right, I'm gonna get the last one or two from the bottom. So let's get it up in the air, make it a little bit easier for me to reach. So I think I got one of the studs in the wrong spot. I have to go up there and take it down and come back and fix it. I know this one goes here. So let's see. You got one there and one there. Yeah, I got to move one of the studs. So here's what kind of threw me a little bit. <laughs> and the, they gave me an extra bolt. This is the one I thought I was missing, but it was still in the box. So I guess. So that being said, we're just going to put that one right back up in here. On the bottom side. And then we can start tightening everything up. If I remember correctly, I think it was a 13 does the big ones and 10 millimeter does the other ones. I hate these glasses. You look up, you can't see. You look down, you can see. You look up, you can't see. It's a pain in the butt. Let me lower it and get the ones on the top. I normally like to use an electric ratchet or air ratchet, but I don't want to take any chances of snapping one of these off in there again. They were calling for snow around here, I think last week. Said they we're going to have it like today and tomorrow. They predicted the week out. And around here, Pete, we don't see a lot of snow. People were going crazy. I had people calling up wanting to know, because we do snow plows here. We build snow plows also. I had people asking me, buying snow plow parts and like we're gonna have a winter storm. I think we got literally hail the size of marbles or ice, whatever the hell you wanna call it. But that was it, it was nothing. All you do is mention snow around here and the school's closed. So my GoPro 8 that I normally do everything with broke and I had a tin at the house. And every time I'm using this tin, it cuts itself off every single time because it gets too hot. What a joke. 540 something dollars and it can't even record at a standstill for no more than 10 minutes without breaking down. <laughs> Literally, it's like the third time this GoPro's cut off now. I don't know where it's cutting off at in the footage and I apologize for it, but what do you expect for $600, right? I get a little action camera because I figure it's easier to film that way up in tight areas and my eight was freaking awesome. This one here is horrible. So after I get this on, before I put the heat shield, I'm gonna start it and make sure there's no leaks anywhere because sometimes, even though you can be as cautious as you want, you're still gonna have something, but this is a good point to where you can start it at to see if there's gonna be any leaks or not. All right, it sounds good. There are no leaks. That smoke you're seeing is a WD-40 burning off. The only thing left to do is put the heat shield on. And this job is done. That is it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Catch you later.